Progear, Gigawing, 1944, Carrier Airwing, Varth, the Capcom Arcade Stadium is just packed with shmups. And in this video, I'm going to provide a quick overview of the kind of general setup and options of the whole package and try to explain quite what it all is and how it works. So first up, the games themselves. There are 32 games available in total, and 15 of them are classified by Capcom as shooting games. Other than that, there are four fighting games, although three of these are just different versions of Street Fighter 2, and the rest are the rather vaguely termed action games. I can't speak for fans of the other genres. From what I've seen, they may be a little disappointed, but for shmup fans, the library included here is bloody awesome. Highlights for me are first console outings for Pro Gear and Carrier Airwing, nearly half a dozen 19 something something games, and Gigawing. I'll probably look in more detail at some individual games in the future, but for now just note that there are a lot of good ones here. Not everything we could have wished for though, Dima Who I believe was Capcom as was Gigawing 2 and I think Mars Matrix. I don't know what rights issues etc there may be with these. But who knows, maybe one day they'll stick out a fourth pack or even add these as one-off purchases. Let's hope so. Now, the way this thing works in terms of purchasing is not the most straightforward. The games are available in three separate packs of 10 ordered chronologically. That of course only adds up to 30 games, and the other two are available either for free or as a bonus. You can actually download the base Capcom Arcade Stadium for free, and if you do that, you will be given access to one game 1943 The Battle of Midway. Once you have that, you can then either add whichever pack or packs appeal to you, or get all three at once with the other bonus game, Ghosts and Goblins, being available if you get the triple pack. Individual packs are $11.99 in the UK, with the three at once combo coming in at $29.99, making for a saving of between 15 and 20%. For me, that price is pretty great, and at less than a buck a game, getting the triple pack was a no brainer. The price, however, ought also to tell you a bit about what to expect. As we'll see, everything is dressed up very nicely, but we are not talking shot triggers levels of attention to detail here. I've seen people talking about input lag on Twitter, especially in docked mode, and I doubt these ROMs are going to hold up to proper scrutiny from pros. Personally, I can currently only play in handheld mode anyway, and the games perform well enough that I can enjoy them perfectly well. I'd say probably anyone who was happy enough with Zero Div's Psycho ports will also be happy enough here, and vice versa for those who were not happy. I think the key thing is to go in with your eyes open. If you're looking for pristine, fully optimized and enhanced ports, that is not what's on offer here. So for those of you who are still interested, once you've got your packs downloaded, you have access to them in this rather snazzy little arcade room where you can scroll down a line of cabs to find the game you want. While nothing has really been done to the games themselves, the overarching setup is well done and provides a lot of pretty great options. Straight away here we can sort the games into genres, so for example we can select only shooting games or only fighting games. There's also a favourites system so you can create your own little menu with just your preferred titles. You can also adjust the appearance of each cab to give your arcade a personalised touch. Pressing back will then allow you to zoom out and see a line of about 6 or 7 cabs all next to each other, and when you're up close you can use the right stick to peer around. A lot of people have noticed Capcom's RE engine gets mentioned when you boot this up, and I'm guessing this is what they used it for. Now I have seen mention of performance issues when viewing the games through the 3D cabs, although I don't really understand why you play like that other than maybe to get a cool screenshot. But playing in normal mode seems to either fix or at least alleviate this. From this main selection area you can also access a manuals section, and these manuals include fairly in-depth explanations for each individual game, often with story pages and tips and tricks, as well as some instructions for how to operate the games and use the options within the Capcom Arcade Stadium itself. You also have access to the Triumphs Room, which is basically a set of in-game achievements. These triumphs are not the only meta system on offer however, and accessing the status menu will show you your playtime and most played games as well as your class. Your class can be improved by collecting the inelegantly named Caspo points, which are awarded through play and, in quite a cool little touch, rising up these classes unlocks some new backgrounds or cabinet types. Once you've played around here, you are of course going to want to dive into the games themselves, 
and we have a bunch of further options to play around with here. These actually vary game to game, but you'll often be able to adjust difficulty, number of lives, and the speed the game plays at. Controls are also fully mappable for all games, which is really necessary because some of the default mappings are not very smart. You may also notice these icons next to the game's names, and these indicate special challenges or limited time activities. The coin stacks are for periods where that game provides extra castable points, and the 9999 is for score chase modes. The stopwatches are for limited time challenges, which I think will offer various alternative ways to play that change over time. One of the ones I played, for example, saw you challenged to play the game upside down. These limited modes all have online rankings, and I actually really like this way of doing things. For shmups, the score chase is of course the biggest deal, and what's great is this mode doesn't allow you to set any of the gameplay conditions yourself, thus ensuring a level playing field. There's also a score minimum to get onto these rankings, and it's not always that easy to meet it. So in other words, you can play around with the normal game using whatever settings you like to practice, credit feed, or just muck about. But then there will always be a separate ranking for your one credit, arcade condition, genuine high score. This is especially important because this collection does provide you with some powerful practice options, including save states and an in-game rewind feature, which is absolutely fantastic for learning games, but obviously really unfair if your scores using it are being used for ranking. Something else I like here is that you can connect and reconnect to the online from the menu. A lot of shmups I've played on Switch don't have this, and if you lose connection, you both lose your current score, and you often have to force restart the game to reconnect. So this is a nice little touch, as is the fact that you do not need Nintendo Switch Online to use the rankings. The other important option you're gonna find is the display option. We have scan lines and the aforementioned ability to play with different backgrounds or inside different cab exteriors, but most importantly, we have screen rotation, although Capcom weirdly claim that they've added this so you can play verts in horizontal mode, which I don't think is gonna be the appeal for anyone, really. One minus point here is that you only have arcade, normal, or max sizes for the screen. This is fine in most games, but in some of the older ones there's no option that allows you to make best use of the screen real estate, and you have to choose between either having a too small screen or a stupidly massive stretched screen. It would be great to see a fit to width or fit to height option added, and I don't think it would be too difficult to patch in. So all in all, I do recommend this very highly. The library of games is phenomenal. The emulation is okay, it's fine. The practice options and online modes are really well done, and the little touches with presentation, achievements, and caspo points shows a bit more love has been given to this than we often see in these sorts of collections. I will try to put up a look at each pack in turn in the coming days, and there are a lot of games I'd love to review in more depth in here, so I hope you'll join me for some of those in the future. Until then, I hope you enjoy exploring these classics, and thanks as ever for watching. Cheers.